Number 15. Grand Central Terminal's Big Secret Though commuters travel through Grand Central Station in New York City every single day, few know that there are secret tunnels that lie below, nine stories below to be exact. Beneath the floor of Grand Central sits the M42 bunker. It's said to have been built during World War II. Rumor has it that because the station delivered troops to and from New York, there was a fear it could be targeted. There's also a hidden station below, Track 61. It's not on any Grand Central train map. It was built specifically to accommodate the wealthy on private trains. In fact, an elevator delivers guests from the platform to the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. FDR was said to use it the most due to his polio. The hidden transport helped hide the fact that the president couldn't walk from the public. Just goes to show you never know what lies below. Number 14. Work causes more people to pass away than war. Yes, war can be gruesome, and it's definitely not a pretty way to pass away, but being worked to that point isn't pretty either. It can be long and painful, especially for those who live in a country where labor laws aren't enforced or don't exist, while heart disease and stroke remain the number one cause of passing away. The International Labor Organization's Director General, Guy Ryder, said that work takes more lives each year than war. Drawn from statistics between 1959 to 2002, an average of 378,000 people passed away each year from war. According to ABC News, more than six times that number passed away from occupational incidents and diseases. That's an estimated 2.3 million workers a year. Number 13. CIA Scary Stupid Assassination Attempts The CIA wanted Castro gone in the 60s, and if they had to do it with a seashell, damn it, they were going to try. During the years between 1960 and 1965, eight assassination plots against the Cuban leader were described in a 1967 report on the subject. This information was only declassified 36 years later. Maybe they should have left it top secret, because the plots are just plain embarrassing. Poison pills, cigars, fungus, air, and even a syringe were all potential objects suggested to send Castro to an early grave. Not only did they want the guy passed away, but they wanted to humiliate him. One plot outlined an idea to fill his shoes with thallium salt so that his beard would fall out. Um, is this a renowned government agency or a group of naughty schoolboys pulling pranks? But the plot that was perhaps the strangest and scariest for how stupid it was involved a booby trap seashell. Castro was known to go diving, so CIA operatives thought that they might plant a particularly beautiful shell in a coral reef he frequented. Being such an avid diver, Castro would of course be the one to grab hold of the shell and set off the explosive device, taking his life instantly. The CIA came to its senses, however, and decided the plot was impractical, although that was not without some investigation into the matter. Books on Caribbean mollusks were purchased by the CIA's head of Cuban operations, Desmond Fitzgerald. They are gathering dust as we speak. Number 12. Gandhi wasn't all good. You know how you think you know a person, and then you discover something about them that flips everything you thought you knew on its head. No one's perfect, but just what does an icon have to do to lose their broader appeal? Mother Teresa doubted the existence of God. Lance Armstrong was doping. You know what Bill Cosby has been accused of by now. And yet, although many know that Gandhi wasn't all good, they really don't know the half of it. It's not that Gandhi was a terrible person, but the idealistic view of this man, whose goodness is often compared to the likes of Martin Luther King Jr., may be a bit of a stretch. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. The British imprisoned Gandhi and his wife in Aga Khan Palace in 1942. Kasturba's poor circulation led to bronchitis pneumonia and one of her sons brought her penicillin to take, but Gandhi wouldn't allow it. Instead, she was given river water from the Ganges, which would supposedly restore her. He believed if God wills it, he will pull her through with only traditional medicine and God's will to save her. Kasturba passed away three days later. Not long after his wife's passing, Gandhi acquired malaria. His doctors pushed quinine on him, but of course, he didn't take it because of God's will. Just kidding, he totally took it and recovered just fine. So while Gandhi remains one of the most quotable world leaders throughout history and in the purview of the past, an activist for peace, he certainly had an Achilles heel. He was imperfect, and Kasturba probably saw the worst side of him. Number 11. The US knowingly let its citizens pass away. The United States allowed African American farmers to pass away from syphilis 
In order to study the disease's progression, it began way back in 1932, during the Great Depression. A study by the U.S. Public Health Care Service took place in Mason County, Alabama, where around 35% of the male population had been found infected with the disease. With the promise of free medical exams, meals, health care, and even burial insurance, the PHS and Rosenwald Fund convinced 600 African American farmers to take part in the study. 201 didn't have syphilis, 399 did. The farmers who were affected with syphilis didn't know they had the disease, and they weren't told of their infection. Instead of treating the farmers for syphilis, doctors monitored them and tested out free treatments, which included agonizing and unnecessary spinal taps. Instead of lasting six months, the program lasted around 40 years, despite the fact that penicillin had been discovered to cure the disease in the 1940s. 130 of the participants passed away during the study and some also went on to infect their wives and children as they weren't told they had the disease. Thankfully, no bad deed goes unpunished. In 1972, the government shut down the program, calling it ethically unjustified. After filing a lawsuit the following year, the families of the study were awarded a $10 million settlement and lifetime health care and burial insurance, but I'm sure no money could quell their pain and anger in this case. Number 10. The Top Secret FISA Decision what is the US government trying to hide? Well, lots of things probably, but in 2011, the government was fighting for its life to keep a key FISA court, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, decision hidden from the public. What did this decision entail? The NSA, of course. This 86-page opinion from the FISA court was pre-Snowden, so the public had no knowledge of the scope of NSA surveillance. In fact, the FISA court declared some of its programs unconstitutional, but the Department of Justice would not allow the Electronic Frontier Foundation to go public with this opinion, despite the fact that FISA itself ruled that it could be made public, and despite the fact that the foundation had filed a public records request for its release. The government still wants to keep this opinion secret, but there's been a breakthrough in the case. According to a report by NBC News, a ruling signed by the court's chief judge, Reggie Walton rejected the Justice Department's arguments that the secret National Security Court's rules prevented disclosure of the opinion. Judge Walton's ruling, however, did not require an immediate release of the top secret opinion, but rather sent the case to a lower court to ensure it met the requirements to be subject to disclosure. If the NSA knows everything about us, what does it have to hide? We'll probably never know. Number 9. Telecommunication companies are at the mercy of the NSA Another scary fact about the NSA that the public isn't supposed to know, they've got big companies in their pocket. Verizon and other big-name telecommunication companies are made to spy on customers by the NSA. The telephone records from millions of Verizon customers were collected by the NSA at a request from the FBI and court ordered by FISA. Whether or not customers were suspected of anything, the order enabled the NSA to gather metadata including locations, unique identifiers, the phone numbers of both sides on a call, time and duration of phone calls, etc. Only the conversation's content was kept private. The top secret court order required these companies to hand over this information on an ongoing daily basis. The order also disallowed Verizon from disclosing the FBI's request and the order itself to the public. Congressmen and surveillance experts alike have declared this collection of personal data as an invasion of privacy, but the fact that the public is now aware of this doesn't seem to change anything. Big Brother is watching us in plain sight, but most people aren't invested enough to care. In fact, through a Pew Research report, noted that 57% of Americans think it's wrong of the government to monitor communications of American citizens citizens, only 17% have claimed to be very concerned about it. 35% are somewhat concerned, but being somewhat concerned about anything means you're not going to do a damn thing to change it. Number 8. The CIA experimented with behavior controlling drugs. The NSA and the FBI aren't the only bad eggs. The CIA is also hiding some deep dark secrets. Unless you've really dug deep into the history of the CIA, you probably have no idea that they've done 
biological, chemical, and radiological experiments on U.S. and Canadian citizens over the span of 20 years from 1953 to 1973, a sinister and illegal CIA program called Project MKUltra recruited 185 private researchers and 80 institutions to perform behavior controlling experiments on citizens using drugs. More often than not, the drugs were administered on people who could not fight back, as one CIA agent puts it. We're talking mental patients, drug addicts, prostitutes, and prisoners. That's some pretty shady stuff, even for an organization as shady as the CIA. LSD was one of the drugs tested due to its ability to distort reality. The CIA believed the drug might also be used to alter a person's loyalties. This was during the Cold War, so the potential application for this would be to convert foreign agents to American operatives. LSD was provided to men in brothels in San Francisco, after which doctors would secretly monitor them and the effects of the drug through two-way mirrors. Even government agents were supplied the drug in order to test whether or not it would elicit a confession or draw the mind blank. Morphine, marijuana, heroin, alcohol, and other drugs were also tested. One person is known to have passed away in these experiments, but the reality could be more. Drug-induced hypnosis was also on MKUltra's agenda. They tested whether it would boost intelligence, produce anxiety, or lead to sleep deprivation in patients. They also experimented with assassination methods using aerosols. If this fact's not scary, I don't know what is. Number 7. Facebook knows. Will your relationship last? Don't ask a magic eight ball. Ask Facebook. According to the social network, the heaps of user data it acquires can help the site determine whether or not a romantic relationship will last. The data suggests that, overall, a Facebook official relationship status of three or more months means a couple will likely stay together for the long haul. Bogdan State, a Facebook data scientist, analyzed U.S. users' relationship statuses over three years, from 2008 to 2011. As one might expect, the most important indicator of a lasting relationship was the duration of their Facebook official relationship status. About half of all Facebook relationships that have survived three months are likely to survive to four years or longer, State concluded in his analysis. The study also found that summer breakups are the most frequent, perhaps due to long distance relationships falling apart once the academic calendar year ends. While not groundbreaking, you might breathe a sigh of relief once your relationship outlasts the three month mark. Apparently, that means you're in it to win it, and your relationship is stable enough to endure. While this fact isn't super scary, the public should be aware that social media knows an excessive amount about us, and delving into our relationships is a little too close for comfort. Number 6. Agent Orange was used in Korea. While most people know about the U.S. military's use of Agent Orange in Vietnam during 1961 to 1971, most don't know that it was also used in the Korean War in 1978. These are historical facts that we'd like to ignore, as the damages done at the hands of chemical warfare were detrimental to generations of Vietnamese and Korean people. Agent Orange is a defoliant and herbicide chemical a mix of two herbicides, which was officially used in Operation Ranch Hand in Vietnam to the detriment of the environment and the health of those exposed. It wasn't until 2011 that it came out in the local press, KPHO-TV in Phoenix, Arizona, that the U.S. had used Agent Orange in 1978, burying 250 drums in its Korean army base, Camp Carroll. By the time it was made public in America, Korea had known about it for more than a decade. Around 20,000 South Koreans filed lawsuits in 1999, alleging damages for over $5 billion. In 2006, they won their appeal, and Dow Chemical and Monsanto were ordered to pay $62 million to 6,800 people. Veterans that served in Korea are also able to seek compensation for presumative exposure. Number 5. The U.S. government knows what's coming in and going out. Another NSA not-so-secret secret. The government organization not only collects information from its own citizens, it also collects all international email and text that crosses U.S. borders. Government officials cite the 2008 FISA Amendments Act, approved by Congress, which deems that cross-border surveillance, i.e. eavesdropping on home turf, was allowable as long as the warranted target was a non-citizen abroad. Hmm, sounds like the NSA is digging deep here. Again, the public isn't supposed to know this. It was uncovered by the New York Times in 2013, and the extent to which the NSA is surveillancing Americans 
continues to broaden instead of narrow. Number 4. Winston Churchill believed in a worldwide Jewish conspiracy. Like Gandhi, Churchill is aged like a fine wine. He's viewed kindly by history as one of the strongest wartime leaders in the world. But as Prime Minister, Churchill firmly believed there was a team of international Jewish people whose objective was to control the world. In fact, when he was Secretary of State for War and Air, he wrote an article on his theory in 1920 entitled, Zionism vs. Bolshevism a struggle for the soul of the Jewish people. While Churchill didn't paint all Jewish people with the same brush, he claimed that there were extremes in the race. He also theorized that Jewish people have three political streams of consciousness, nationalism, Zionism, and aesthetic communism. The first two were honorable, according to Churchill, but as for aesthetic communism, these were devastating. In his essay, he said of these types, most, if not all, of them have forsaken the faith of their forefathers and divorced from their minds all spiritual hopes of the next world. He called this movement a worldwide conspiracy and claimed that it played a part in forming Bolshevism and the Russian Revolution. Number 3. Barbie's Origins Are As An Escort Aside from the impossible physical expectations the Mattel group places on children, Barbie seems like an innocent enough plaything, right? Wrong. Nothing could be less innocent. Barbie's origins date back to 1940s Germany. The design was originally that of the Lily doll, a German gag gift escort doll for adults. You heard that right. Your little girls have been playing with escort dolls. Created by Reinhard Buthein, Lily was a cartoon character for the tabloid Bild Zeitung, which is based in Hamburg, Germany. The character, full name Bild Lily, was a buxom blonde gold digger who managed to attract rich men with her looks and sass. Lily's quick wit and appeal made her so popular that the newspaper decided to make a quick buck from her rising popularity by selling a doll version in bars and at tobacco kiosks as an adult novelty toy. They became a popular gag gift at bachelor parties and a common dangler for the rearview mirror. During the 1950s, the product began to expand. Different styles of clothes and accessories were designed to dress Lily. This attracted young girls who, of course, wanted to dress her up. This is where Mattel came into the fold and really put Lily on the map, albeit with a different name. A toy designer, Ruth Handler, picked up some Lily dolls on a trip to Europe and, returning home, worked on the doll's design until she became Barbie. The popular toy made her debut on March 9, 1959 at New York Toy Fair. Shortly after, Mattel bought the rights to build Lily and German companies ceased production. Number 2. Yellow 5 and 6 Lots of fast food restaurants use ingredients that you can't pronounce. However, although you can pronounce yellow dye 5 and 6, the contents aren't any less mysterious. These artificial dyes are approved by the FDA and are used to color various food and drink offerings at places like Burger King, Chick-fil-A, Wendy's, and Dunkin' Donuts. And yet they've been nixed by many companies in the UK due to the fact that they're linked to behavioral problems and hyperactivity in children. The UK government also now requires that food with these two scary yellows have warning labels. The dyes are also used in soap and nail polish. It's probably best just to avoid them. Before we get to number 1, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you've ever been curious as to what I look like in real life, then follow me on Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT with underscores instead of spaces. I also have a Twitter at YT underscore Chills where I post video updates. I'd really appreciate it if you followed me and feel free to send me a DM if you have any questions or suggestions. If you'd like to see more of these videos in the future, then hit that subscribe button because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Number 1. You can buy almost anything on the dark net. The internet has made it easier than ever to get away with certain activities under the cover of darkness. When it comes to the web, this darkness is in the form of the dark net. If you're an innocent Googler, social networker, or YouTuber, you're probably not using the internet to access nefarious sites and purchase stuff on black markets. In fact, you probably have no idea they exist, but they do, and it's scary. The Onion router enables online anonymity and allows folks to access the dark net, i.e. websites that aren't part of the regular internet. You can do and buy anything in this dark underworld. Guns, drugs, and assassin. Hacker services are up for grabs. 
as their stolen credit cards, fake IDs, and forged documents. In fact, the Silk Road market was removed in 2013 by the FBI. It was the internet's largest hidden drug market, and its alleged creator was charged with computer hacking, money laundering, and drug trafficking. 150 million worth of bitcoins were also seized. The criminal underworld did not disband, however. It simply found a different marketplace. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Or if you're still not convinced, here are some of our other videos that I think you'd like. Enjoy!